In this video, we're gonna be working on an HP Spectre X360 that came in for no power. This one is not the usual USB-C charging port. It's the one that is circular, the blue plug that goes in. And customer mailed this over because there's no signs of power anywhere on the board. So the first thing I'm gonna do is quick physical inspection on the board. We'll start with quick physical inspection and then we will move on to thermal camera. And then we'll test some components on the board to see what's going on. I'm just looking for possibly blown components or discolored components. I just want to see if there's anything unusual on the board because a lot of times when there's something wrong on the board, it's obvious and other times the fault is not obvious, which is more difficult because we have to do a lot of measurements and we do not have any circuit diagrams for this laptop, so everything must be done based on experience and physical inspection with the help of the thermal camera, of course. Okay, so far the board looks mint. I do not see anything obvious on the board. This is the SSD drive, 256 gigs. And this is the BIOS chip right here, firmware. Everything looks good. Here, oh, 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 look at this. We have a blown component. We have a blown component. See that hole in the middle of the component? That's a 10 R0, 10 ohm resistor, probably most likely an 805 size SMD. Okay, so I think we're gonna change that component. I do have a 10 ohm 805 resistor in stock. And I do not wanna use hot air to remove that component because I did not remove the motherboard of the housing. So we're gonna use our hot tweezers and we're going to also test capacitors at random in this area to see if we have a short anywhere on that board. But let's go ahead and replace that component. Add a tiny bit of flux and that way we do not have to remove the board of the laptop. The question is, how did that component fail? I have no idea. We do not know what went on with this laptop to cause this filter or this resistor to blow. And that's exactly the same resistor. Exactly the same resistor. How did I know that? How did I know the size was 805? Very nice. Meter in diode mode. I'm gonna test capacitors at random. Just to see if we have a short anywhere. No short. And it looks like we have a short here. Meter in resistance mode. What's the reading on this guy? That short, zero ohm. Zero ohm. So it's a short on here that caused the resistor to blow, most likely. If we test the gate, it's testing good.
What if we test here? We also have a short. Now look at the way this capacitor looks. What happens if we plug the battery in right now and try to power it on? I mean, I do not like the way the battery looks on the customer's laptop. It's wavy. We have a battery here that we're gonna use and this is a good flat battery. It's not wavy like the customer's battery. I just wanna see what happens if we plug our battery and it's still not powering on even though this battery is charged. Let me plug the charging cable. I'm gonna monitor that component while plugging that cable. Yeah, you see? We saw that in real time. That's what I wanted to do. We saw that in real time. Like I said, that component is not gonna blow by itself. There's something causing it to blow. Right now, it's obvious that we have a short on the capacitor next to it. Right now, what we can do is we can inject voltage on that capacitor and see what gets hot on the board. We're gonna use the voltage injection tool. And we're gonna connect the ground to any of the ground points here on the board. Maybe I can connect the clip to a screw. So ground is connected to a screw right here. And now we're gonna inject voltage at the MOSFET or the capacitor that is short into ground. Look at that, four amps being drawn. We need to look at the thermal camera. We're gonna inject voltage, 1.2 volts, and we're gonna monitor and see what gets hot on the board. Let's go ahead and inject 1.2 volts at the capacitor that is shorting to ground. This is getting hot right here. So short is not coming from the MOSFET that is next to the cap, but rather it's coming from right here, the MOSFET. So I pointed my probe right over here, and what got hot is this. Or the short could be coming from somewhere on bottom of the board. Maybe the short is not coming from here. Heat is being generated from this side of the board, but maybe the short is coming from somewhere on the bottom here. I'm gonna inject 1.2 volts again and see what happens. I wanna monitor those caps, the big ones. This whole area is getting hot. Let me increase temperature boundaries. I mean, this is the inductor, the coil. Okay, let me increase the temperature boundaries a bit more. Inject 1.2 volts and see what happens. This whole area is getting hot. Well, I think what I'm going to do is remove that coil just to see if the short is coming from the MOSFETs or if the short is coming from the lower part of the board here. Okay, the inductor is out. Meter in diode mode. Let's see. So the short is coming from the bottom here. Short is coming from here and not from the other side of the board because look at this. The other side of the board is clean and the side of the board is the one that has the short. Look at the pad, follow the pad. It's everything inside here. It's everything here that has the short. Okay, so we eliminated the lower side of the board being the problem. And now we can solder the inductor back. Okay, inductor is back in place. And now maybe we can desolder 
this than this or vice versa and see if the short is coming from those MOSFETs. Those three are not shorting to ground. And this one is. I mean, this cap is short into ground, and this cap is actually going to the IC here. So it could be that this IC is our problem, or any one of those two is causing the problem. I think I'm going to ask Big Boss to remove the board. I do not want to work on the board while it's still inside the laptop. I do not want to burn anything on this laptop. I'll be back. Okay, so I asked Big Boss to remove the board and he did. And right now our short could be coming from either this chip or any one of those two MOSFETs. We do have a short here on this cab, but not anywhere else. So a short from this cab is likely to, to this chip if the cap itself is not short into ground. Last time we were working on a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus, we removed two chips from the board and the problem turned out to be the cap. It's usually really not the cap, but let me start with the cap just in case. This cap is shorting to ground and I highly doubt that the problem is this cap, but let's start with it. Let's test to see if we still have a short. You see? The problem is not the cap. Because some people asked in the comments when I was doing the S9 Plus, how come you did not start with the cap first? You removed two chips and not the cap. Because based on my experience, it's likely not the cap. And this goes to show you that the short is really not the cap itself. I mean, those caps do short, but from my experience, it's usually the chip. It's more likely the chip than the cap. And since that cap has a direct connection with this chip, I have a very strong reason to believe that the problem is this chip. So let's go ahead and remove it. Let's remove the chip and see if the short is coming from this IC. And let's see, do we still have a short? Do we still have a short? And the short is gone. The short is gone. So the IC is what's causing the short. Let me test here also. I mean, we still have a short here on this cap. Okay, so now with this IC out, I'm gonna inject voltage on this cap and see what gets hot on the board now? We're gonna inject voltage right over here and we're gonna see what gets hot. Jump over to our thermal cam and right now the board is hot because we applied hot air. Okay, so right now we wanna ignore the mat. This is the mat here. The mat is hot because of hot air, but the board starts from this edge right here. So let's inject 1.2 volts on that shorted cap and see what gets hot. The same. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do is desolder those two MOSFETs. That would be the fastest way of doing it. Desolder those two MOSFETs. And we'll take it from there. And let's remove this guy as well. 
microscope camera was not on. Great. I desoldered this MOSFET and I desoldered this MOSFET. And we also removed that chip from before. So now we have three ICs off the board and we're gonna go ahead and test to see if we still have a short on the side of the board because this component, when we inject 1.2 volts on this component, this area is getting hot. So these components are linked with this cap. Let's see if we still have a short on this cap. If not, then most likely the problem is one of those two MOSFETs. Emitter in diode mode. And look at that, the short is gone. The short is gone. So it's one of those two MOSFETs that is causing the problem. What about this IC? This IC may still be good. We're gonna solder it back on. And we'll see. We still have unleaded solder on the board, but that's okay. It's a tiny IC and it shouldn't matter. And now with this chip on, let's go ahead and test this cap as well. And the short came back on. <laughs> the short came back on. So we're gonna remove that chip again. The best thing to do now is to see if we have a donor board or a donor laptop that is similar and we can extract those components from that donor board or laptop and get this board to work. I took the chip back out and if we test again, the short is gone, okay. So I'm gonna go and look in the bin of laptops and see if we have something similar that we can extract the chips from and I'll be back. Okay, so I was able to find a donor board, exactly the same one. So we're gonna be using parts from that board. And what we can do is we can go ahead and test to make sure those parts on the donor board are good. I mean, this chip is the BQ chip. I know from the Nintendo Switch, a BQ chip is a charging IC, but it's not the same one as the Nintendo Switch. This one is uh, BQ175. It's a five pin on each side connector. The one on the Nintendo Switch is six pins. Otherwise, I would have used the chip from the Nintendo Switch that had matched. Meter in diode mode, let's make sure that this IC is good. We're gonna test this cap here and it's not short into ground. Chances are this is good. And let's test this cap here and it's a no short, great. So we can use all three chips from this donor board. In the meantime, let's go ahead and prep this board. I already applied some flux here and we're gonna apply flux here and here. We're gonna prep the pads by adding leaded solder. just a tiny bit in the center here. And let's start by desoldering the first chip, the BQ chip. And we're gonna solder that chip right here. down ok 
quality and this shit is soldered on nicely. Let me just get rid of some of the excess solder on this cap here. Very nice. Now we're gonna solder those two MOSFETs. And let's do the other one and we can clean up, clean that solder blob later. But let me grab the other component. Right now we also have to change this blown resistor that we changed before and it blew again. So let's grab another one. Add some flux here. And we are on our way to have any good functional working laptop. And before we reassemble the board, let's go ahead and test, make sure we do not have a short on this cap right here. Meter in diode mode, red probe on ground, and we do not have a short anymore. And let's also test if we have a short on this cap, and we do not. And those are the three ICs I took off, I put them right here. One, two, three. And that's it, I'm gonna give it to Big Boss to reassemble, and I'll be back in a few minutes. So Big Boss reassembled the board, and it's a no-go. I noticed that this capacitor is now shortened to ground again because of those two MOSFETs. Those two MOSFETs are now shortened to ground, and they have gone bad. We did resolve the short by replacing those two MOSFETs, but after he plugged the charging cable in, those two MOSFETs went bad again. Uh, right now we do not have a circuit diagram, and we do not have a board diagram for this board. I already spent enough time on this board and this is turning out to be a rabbit hole that I do not want to continue working on because I mentioned this in many videos before. I cannot afford to spend the whole day working on one single board. It's not efficient, it's not practical, it's not economical. We have a lot of repairs that we need to get done. Can we figure out what's causing those components to go bad? Probably yes. If I want to spend enough time working on this board, I can probably figure it out. We're going to deem this repair a no fix and we're going to mail this back to the customer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Even though it's a no fix, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll do something else in the next video.